Hi, everybody. Jay Privman, the national correspondent with Daily Racing Forum, joined yet again by Marty McGee, my tag team partner for Derby Watch 2020. And we're going to give you an update as to how our list currently looks and what to look forward to this coming weekend. And Marty, let's start with the couple of changes that we needed to make to the top 20 this week. One horse, that being Structure, is out. Chance it is in, and you had to tweak uh, a couple of prices, including the one on Chance it. Let us let us know what all you did here. Well, Chance it is thirty to one on our line for this week. He is the second choice in the Fountain of Youth, even with having having drawn the uh, twelve hole in a field of twelve, which was surprisingly large. Uh, we were expecting maybe eight or nine or something like that. But uh, anyway, he's in on, on the on the chance that if he does win, which he well could. He'll be in the Derby. And uh, the horse that came out, Structor, uh, Chad Brown texted us a few days ago saying uh, he's just a little bit behind with him. He's got to kind of reconfigure his schedule. Uh, as you know, he won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf to stay unbeaten as a two-year-old. He hasn't run yet as a three-year-old like a number of them haven't who would or would not be on this list. And, uh, and Chad's going to go from there. But for the meantime, he's off the list. So that was the only change made from our Derby Watch list from last week to this week. There's one big race this weekend, as Marty mentioned. It is the Fountain of Youth. Chance it. We'll get to him in a moment. Twelve entered in this race. Four of the entrants are on our current Derby Watch top 20. But Marty, the horse I think most everybody is eagerly looking forward to seeing is the morning line favorite in the race. And that's Dennis's moment, who we haven't seen since an awful start in the Breeders' Cup, but he's been training at Gulfstream. So let's get everybody up to speed on how he's been doing. You've seen him in person down there, uh, or down here, I should say, since I've joined you this week now uh, from my comfy confines of California. I've come back here. Uh, what do you think of Dennis's moment? Well, that was the telling moment right there uh, at the start of the Breeders' Cup. After that, uh, pretty much all chances were lost. He never got into a, you see his strides a little bit clumsy there, a little bit uh, awkward. And he just never picked it up. So he gets a mulligan for that, Jay. Uh, since then, as Dale Rome, as his trainer says, uh, yeah, I remember, but, but I'm trying to forget that moment. And uh, they're starting all anew here. Uh, he's kind of progressed in his works in terms of distance and times and everything else. And uh, I know you talked to Dale this morning. I'm sure he expressed the optimism that he has been for weeks and months now. And uh he drew a good post with post five in a field of 12. So uh, let, let's see what he can do. Yeah, he said it's time to stop talking and uh, finally run the race. Uh, he has been training regularly at Gulfstream Park. And obviously, Mike Welsh has seen him. You've seen him. And there'll be a full report on his progress. Dennis's moment works under Dale Romans's life partner, Tammy Fox. She lets him roll along and Marty, this is a really flashy looking horse when he breezes. And from what we've seen, when he doesn't lose the rider at the start or stumble at the start, he can turn in some flashy races in the afternoon as well. What do you think of his works? Yeah, his works have been great. He's had seven of them starting in uh, early to mid January. And if Dale could have scripted it up to this point uh, the way he wanted to, it's, it's uh, come to fruition. So, uh, you know, again, Jay, he's going in with, with nary an excuse other than the fact he will not have raced for close to, what, four months. Um, and actually, you got to go back before that because he didn't really race in the Breeders' Cup. But anyway, uh, let's, like Dale said, uh, enough of the talking. Let's do some walking. <laughs> exactly. It's time to, to get him out there. Well, uh, a couple of horses that are in this race that are challenging him are coming out of the Mucho Macho Man in early January. Chancet, who's new to our Derby Watch Top 20, and as seen on TV, they ran each other nose and nose to the wire. Marty, what do you think of these two in this race, and what do you think of their chances as they stretch out anew around two turns? I actually thought that Kelly Breen's horse, as seen on TV, was a was a winner the whole way, but Chancet on the inside battled back and, and nipped him on the wire. It was one of those head bobs. But, uh, yeah, right there it seemed like, uh, Kelly had it, but no. And uh, I, I kept calling and texting and, and bugging uh, Kelly at the races about what are we going to do with him next? And they had considered the uh, Gotham, the Tampa Bay Derby, both of which are next week, along with the San Felipe. And uh, they ended up deciding 
to run in this race thinking it was going to be a small field, but a little bit of surprise there. So uh, uh, field of 12, as we've said tomorrow in the Fountain of Youth, but he, he's one of the speeds in here. It seems like there's quite a bit of speed in here, Dale, uh, Dale Jay. And um, so yeah, it, it's going to be up to Paco Lopez to work out the right kind of. We look the point. same. <laughs> and speaking of trying to work out a trip, chance at, chance at drawing the outside post, uh, he uh, is going to have to overcome a wide draw uh, in this race, and he's got speed. He's won going a mile and a 16th, but obviously the draw did him no favors, Marty. No, it really didn't. There's a couple of other horses to his inside, Shotsky, that, that uh, has been, had, he's likely to show speed. It's going to be a uh, you know, we've talked about these kinds of races at Gulfstream. We have that they have the short run into the first turn. How uh, it's so pivotal as to how the uh, first quarter mile works itself out. So, uh, you know, if if Chance is going to win, he's going to have to get away away from there cleanly and and save as much ground as he can. Another horse who's on our Derby Watch top twenty is at Te in the end. He comes off a nice second place finish. In the Holy Bull behind Tis the Law, who's your current favorite for the Kentucky Derby. And Marty, here's another horse who's going to be forwardly placed. I thought he ran a good, solid second in this race. And if it wasn't for Tis the Law, we might be raving about the eight or nine leg victory of Ate Indienne. What did you think of his race? Oh, absolutely. It was half a mile back to the next horse, uh, Aja Weed, who was third. And uh, by the way, he's going to run in either the Louisiana Derby or the UAE Derby, according to. Kieran McLaughlin, I thought it was a major step forward for A.T. Indian. Patrick Bianco now has two contenders for the Derby, with also with uh, Soleil Volante, who apparently is going to run next week uh, in the Tampa Bay Derby over at Tampa Bay Downs. So uh, he's looking pretty live right now, Jay. He certainly is. It's Andy and to me, Marty, uh, I liked his race last time. I just don't know how he's going to respond to having even more pace pressure than he did in his most recent race. I thought he ran a good race last time, and obviously it was against the top Colt, but this is going to be a different race from a pace scenario, don't you think? Absolutely. He kind of had it his own way last time out uh, with just tis the law coming to get him and nobody else. Uh, and like we said, it, it's going to be gangbusters into the first turn here, it looks like. And uh, another horse who Marty was mentioning earlier who figures to be forwardly placed is Shotsky. Marty, I've been a little bit circumspect about how good I think this horse is. I thought he ran okay in the Withers last time, but he just looks to me like he might be reaching the outer limit of his distance capabilities. And there's a lot of others in this race and certainly on our top 20 who I like more. You've been a little more bullish on him than I have. What do you think of him in this race? Well, he's done what's been asked of him and he, he did win a, a fairly significant uh, New York prep and, uh, you know, it's good to have a new guy like Jeremiah O'Dwyer on the on the Derby Trail. Uh, we see some of the same faces year after year, but uh, I'd like to see him maybe do some good, run his race, and not really come away from there with any excuses, and, and we'll go on and see what he can do. Well, that's our look at our current Derby Watch Top 20 and a preview of the Fountain of Youth Stakes and all the horses that are going to be running in that race, come back to this spot next week. Marty and I will be doing two videos. We'll recap the Fountain of Youth and update how that impacts our Derby Watch Top 20. And then we'll have previews of several big races that'll all be run next Saturday. The Tampa Bay Derby, as Marty was referring to, the San Felipe and the Gotham. It's gonna be a big weekend of racing on the Derby Watch Trail. For Marty McGee, I'm Jay Privman. Thanks for watching.